Welcome to Pod Me If You Can, I'm David Farrell. Today on the show, it's The Big Picture, starring Kevin Bacon, Terry Hatcher, and Jennifer Jason Lee from 1989. Pod Me If You Can, movie reviews. Nick Chapman, played by Kevin Bacon, is an up-and-coming filmmaker. He wins a short film competition and is thrust into the limelight. Now agents and studios all want to make his next feature film. Will he compromise his artistic vision or make the film he's always imagined in his mind? So this film was fantastic. It's directed by Christopher Guest and he's done A Mighty Wind and For Your Consideration. And this was just a bit of a gem. I was really pleased to find it and really happy to watch it uh, for these obscure film reviews. This is one of the best performances I've seen from Kevin Bacon. It's subtle, and uh, most of the film, he's the guy you want to root for. He's the champion of the film, and uh, I think I enjoyed this even more as uh, a kind of former director myself, that uh, you could be thrown into the studio system with a short film, and the way that buzz and everything works, and how people don't even watch the short film and still want to work with you just based on reputation. It takes you through all the stages from winning the award for a short film at the beginning of the film to uh, the production of his film at the end. So on the way we meet a very funny agent played by Martin Short who steals many scenes that he's in and is just a ridiculous caricature but he's very very funny. This film has a lot of laughs. Some of the funny stuff comes from fantasy sequences. When he's actually pitching his story to an executive we actually get to watch the film play out which is great. When he's worried about something, a fantasy sequence kicks in. And they're all very effective and uh, add great humour to the film. What's great about it is, as a director, it's the way he sees the world. So he walks into a room and he starts imagining it as a film, or imagining what kind of scene he's in. Now, of course, because he's talking to agents and executives and people that want to see their own vision incorporated on the screen, Uh, they start trying to change his film, which he has in his mind, and, I mean, that we're seeing sort of play out in these sequences. So the whole time he's compromising things, and uh, it's never quite working out the way he thought it would. For example, he wants to shoot the film in black and white, and he's told, hilariously, that some theatres don't even show black and white, that their movie projectors are colour. He suggests things like he doesn't want his film to have any music at all, And uh, sort of these things make him seem incredibly inexperienced that his film would have no music. But then the flip side is that the agents and executives want him to have 15 pop songs. And so you've got to kind of find that in between and that compromise that he's not quite confident enough to do. It's a really good cautionary tale as you watch him fall from grace and uh, kind of submit to the studio system. At about the halfway point of the film is when he becomes unlikable, and it's just for a brief period of time. He becomes infatuated with Terry Hatcher's character, who's an actress, and has amazing big hair. Uh, Not all the time, she dresses up in quite a few different costumes, because she's an actress, but when we first see her with this big hair at this party, it's hilarious. Now Terry Hatcher becomes this source of infatuation for him. So at 47 minutes into the film, he decides to break up with his girlfriend and just says, maybe we should see other people. And then she kind of agrees, and they split up. But it doesn't lead anywhere, and he regrets it immediately. But it's just such a knee-jerk reaction, and the kind of um, not-so-sensible thinking that puts the audience offside. So it's just at that point of the film we lose him, uh, but otherwise he's very likable and easily easily relatable um, for the audience. There's fantastic extras and fantastic depth in each frame here from Christopher Guest. Some of the extras who are just incredibly tanned and too tanned and kind of uh, the victims of Hollywood. Uh, They must be people that he's met at a party. There must be so many examples of this through the 90s and the 80s in Hollywood. So it's all a facade and it's so fascinating to watch. While this is a really nice, funny film that I really enjoyed and, and got a lot of amusement out of, Uh, The one thing that I will say is the film he wants to make and the vision that he's fighting for is this black and white film with three 40-year-olds in a cabin for the entirety of the film. And this film doesn't sound very commercially successful. So maybe we needed a scene at the end where everyone says what a genius he is and how he's the next Kubrick and how great this film was. Rather than just ending the film in production, 
He's absolutely kind of getting his vision by the end. But uh, the problem is, is that I feel like the next thing that would happen is people would say it's a box office failure. So I think we needed that reassurance at the very, very end of the film that he was some kind of creative genius or, uh, you know, we want you for the next film or whatever, you know, that the happy ending was sort of with an asterisk for me. Jennifer Jason Lee plays a bubbly offsider. Uh, she's a kooky kind of friend and she's so young in this it's almost unrecognisable. Other cameos included Elliot Gould, Fran Drescher, and the dad from 7th Heaven. The big picture is a lot of fun and you should definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out our podcast at www.podmeifyoucan.com.